Honor your father and your mother. Two quick statutes or titles to go under family and education. Some of these are repetitive. Oh, there is one controversial thing here. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that. <laughs> Parents shall teach their children the law of God. If we were doing that, that's why this statute says, honor your father and mother. Why? So that you live long in the land. If every parent were educating their kids in God's law and teaching their kids how to educate their kids in God's law and that progression kept going, we would stay long and live very happily in this land. Children shall honor and fear their father and their mother. Those are the only God-given authorities we should fear. We're, we're in the place of God to our kids. That's who we are to them. If a child is rebellious and will not respond to chastisement, he shall be put to death. This is juvenile delinquency. We get this mixed up a lot. The law of God, the father has property rights in his family. I don't know if you knew that, but the father is the patriarch. He's the head of the family. He bears all the burden. Father is solely responsible for all debts made by his family. This is Numbers 30, I think it is. If a child is rebellious and damages the neighbor property, injures the neighbor's family, or even murders a neighbor's family, guess who's responsible? The father is. This changes things. In Numbers chapter 30, it was Numbers 30, it talks about contracts and covenants and vows within the family and how the father can annul the daughters and all a whole bunch of different things. The bottom of the line is the father bears the iniquity. He's the one that bears the sin. The father, but then in the scriptures it also says the father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. But this every man is talking about adults. So once that child reaches adulthood, now the father does not bear that burden. But when they're under that, which I think is the age of 20, the father bears that burden, which is what the scripture seems to point out. If you look at Exodus 21, 28 through 29, if an ox gore a man or a woman that they die, then the ox shall be surely stoned and his flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be quit. But if the ox were wont to push with his horns in the past, and it hath been testified to his owner, and he has not kept him in, but that he has killed a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and who? The owner shall be stoned. Well, why would this not be true for your children? If you're being neglectful, for an animal, if you're being neglectable for your kids, why would it not be the same thing? I think that's what this statute means. If your child is a juvenile delinquent, you've, you need to take care of business. If, if they're out of control, it might require a death penalty. The father will always decide when to take the child to court to determine guilt. It's always a trial, and it's always before two or more witnesses. And, it must be and they must be found guilty. So there's, it's not like there's not going to be a trial. So let's read it. It says, if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son. See, we miss the context all the time. Stubborn and rebellious. Which will not obey the voice of his father. So he's not listening to his father. Or the voice of his mother. And that when they have cha chastened him, will not hearken unto them. So this is juvenile delinquency. He's, he's, almost, he's a lost case. Then his father and his mother shall lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, the elders of the city and the gate is where the judicial system was in all the cities. So he's going to court. This is our son. This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of the city shall stone him with stones that he die. Why? So shall thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. The whole point to this is that all of Israel learns. I guarantee this has to happen once. And every kid in the land is going to recognize that they're going to obey their parents. We used to have public, public executions. You can find pictures online in America of a hanging, and hundreds of people from the town watching. Why? Because it teaches your kids and it teaches you, you better keep the commandments, you better keep God's law. He who strikes his father or mother shall be put to death. 
And he who curses his parents shall be put to death. This is also juvenile delinquency. The word for curse is to abate, make bright, bring into contempt, curse or despise. It's translated as abate, which means hostile. This is someone who's hostile. The word curse isn't like we think where you're just swearing. The times when I was 10 and I swore at my mom or got mad wasn't for me to get stoned. This is serious stuff here. It's not just you know lighthearted things. And remember, the parents were the ones that took them to court. So... Who better to make that decision than the parents? It must have been dire, a dire situation before you'd make that decision. And if they were really good parents, the kid, so if they're really good parents and they're teaching this, and this kid's going astray, something is really messed up with the kid. Yeah. It, it's not just like he's mad that one day. I've only got two kids and they're young, but in the little time I've been raising them, I've learned they become what I teach them to become. It's very clear if you're strict and you discipline them, they'll turn. All their bad habits came from me. I mean, all their bad habits come straight from us. I mean, they're homeschooled, so they don't get a lot of outside. But it's very clear what I do is, is what they're going to come into. So it, the father needs to bear that burden. We need to teach and train our kids. You're very lucky. You're very fortunate. You're blessed, whatever. <laughs> well, I'm a public school teacher, and I could tell you homeschooling is one of the best things for them. This is the controversial one. I apologize, and I'm almost done. You shall not pass your children through the fire to Moloch. I'm going to ask you guys to remember when we talked about the offerings, because it's important to understand the offering. Passing your seed through the fire to Moloch. Seed represents your children. Moloch is a ruler or a god. Right? Moloch, that is king, the chief deity of the Ammonites. It comes from the word Melech, which is to reign, to ascend to the throne, to be king. Another way to put this is passing your seed through the fire to the king. Through the fire is a euphemism for contract. It's the burnt offering. It's for covenants and contracts. The burnt offering was given when God made covenant with Noah, when God made covenant with Abraham, when God made covenant with Israel. Every time a covenant is made, a burnt offering is given. This is a covenant offering. In the Abrahamic covenant, what did they do? When the Abrahamic covenant was ratified, God passed between the sacrifices. So he cut them in pieces, just like the burnt offering, and he passed through them. This was a custom used in making and confirming contracts. A calf or some other creature were cut in pieces. The burnt offering is the only offering that was cut in pieces. Just as God passed through the sacrifices to ratify a covenant, so passing your seed through the fire to Moloch ratifies a covenant. It, uh, this is what Shlomo gets... This, don't ask me to say his name, but uh, his comment on this is, it's a form of idolatry named Molech, and this was the manner of its worship, that one would hand over one's child to the pagan priests who would make two huge fires. The child was then passed through on foot between these two fires. The child wasn't injured. We keep thinking that it's child sacrifice, and that's not what passing your seed through the fire to Molech is. It is generally assumed that the child went through unscathed. That's what the Encyclopedia Biblica said about the passing your seed through the fire to Moloch. The child wasn't harmed. Rabbi Maimonides agrees that the children were not harmed when he said it was a light thing. He called it a light thing. It wasn't that big of a deal. So they didn't think much of it. It wasn't killing your child like we seem to think. Jephthah's vow, was Jephthah really going to offer the next person that came out of his house to slit his throat, bleed him out, and burn him on the altar? Is that what he was going to do? Or are we misunderstanding that? He said, I will offer it up for a burnt offering. This is why Jephthah's vow was not child sacrifice. His daughter was dedicated in covenant to God, which means his daughter was leaving him to serve God. She was probably going to one of the gates of the city or to the temple or somewhere, one of the high places to serve the Lord. So she's not going to get married and bear children and have a family. And it, it was devastating to Jephthah. He didn't want that, but he wasn't going to kill her. This is the doctrine of parents patre today. Parents patre is Latin for parent of his or her country. The power of the state to act as guardian for those who are unable to care for themselves. Such as children or disabled individuals. For example, under this doctrine, a judge may change custody, child support, or other rulings affecting a child's well-being. Regardless of what the parents may have agreed to. 
This is what we've done in America, you guys. It's called a birth certificate. A birth certificate is an adhesion contract. That's a standard form contract drafted by one party, usually a business with stronger bargaining power and signed with the weaker party, that would be us, usually a consumer in need of goods who must adhere to the contract and therefore does not have the power to negotiate or modify the terms of the contract. Hmm. By the common law, parental rights were vested in the father. The modern tendency, however, is towards the equalization of the rights of the father and the mother. This is evidenced by the adoption of statutes. What statutes is he talking about? How are we changing from a patriarchal family to a matriarchal family in America? Well, there's two big things. It's called a marriage contract, a marriage license, and a birth certificate. That's what we're doing. This is exactly what happened to Israel. We just use different terms today. Makes them joint guardians. So the conclusion. Getting a birth certificate for your child is what the Bible calls passing your seed through the fire to Moloch. It sounds horrible. We're not sacrificing your kids. But what it basically means when you get a birth certificate is the state is governing my child. They're in charge, which is why we don't have authority over our kids anymore. That's why we have to ask CPS and their permission to do things. If you didn't do that, CPS has no authority and you actually have authority over your kids. It, it, it's, it, you, you can Google it, look it up, it's just a fact, that's the truth. Now, what's the remedy for this? There is no remedy to the birth certificate. <laughs> there is no fix except, well first, vows, we are to keep, God said that, you're to keep your vow. You sign up for it, that's, that's what you did. you got to do it. The state's not going to give your kid back. The state owns the kid. That's, that's just the way it works. You know, a kid without a birth certificate cannot go to public school. I don't know if you knew that, because the state will only educate their kids. That's the way they word it. They will only educate their kids. Take that literal, because they're not going to educate your kids or my kids. They're going to educate their kids. That's how it works. That's why they're collateral for the... Debt. Exactly. Yeah. The solution, follow the agreement made and you will not have any problems. There are always ways of escape. The Apostle Paul said, hey, there's a way of escape for all temptation and trials. There are ways of escape that God has made for us to obey Him in these situations. If your child has a birth certificate and CPS is the governing authority, what the courts say happened is you said, I am incompetent to manage the affairs of my child. That's the literal wording. And you want the state to take over those affairs. That's the way the law is worded. Okay, so what do you do? Well, you homeschool. God leaves ways of escape in our laws so that we can still teach and train our kids. This, this contract is void at age 18. You know why? Because that child has to act upon it before, it's, before they're bound to it. So if, if a child is five and they have a birth certificate, no big deal. Once they're 18, the minute they sign up for Social Security or use that birth certificate, they're bound to it. Because you've got to rescind it at that point. And you can. It's possible to do. So yes? the tax code, people that um, write their children off have to have a Social Security number to register that. You, you don't get any tax breaks you with a child without a birth certificate. But at 18, for the child to be bound to it, they actually have to use it. So if the child chooses not to use it for their whole life, it's not activated for them as an adult. Because you, they, once they become of age, they actually have to use it. The problem is we all do. It's like Social Security. The minute I signed up for, my parents signed me up for Social Security. But once I applied for a job and filled it out, I'm bound to it. It's called the Doctrine of Latches. It comes from the Scripture. The Doctrine of Latches comes from Numbers 30. And it basically means you have to act in a timely manner. So what happens is, if I had a Social Security card and I didn't want it, when I turned 18, I need to go rescind it immediately. If I wait till I'm 30, having used it for 15, 20 years, and say, oh, I didn't know any better, it, it, it doesn't hold water in court. It's called the Doctrine of Latches. You need to act in a timely manner. So what, what a child would have to do is 18, rescission, write it up, send it to the courts, and take care of it immediately. Um, that's the way out. Um, whether someone feels the need to do that is up to them. Uh, it, it, it's kind of hard to live life without it today, but it's possible. Several people do it. There's, a, there's whole communities, the Amish do it. Um, they, they don't sign those contracts and they purposely avoid it, but you've got to live a very simple life.